Hi, so this is um, Bristol Children's Hospital, or at least it was in the 80s. It's been replaced with somewhere really nice and shiny now. This is where I spent an awful lot of my childhood. So it wasn't a great place to visit every week, but this is what I did for most of it. But it was on the trip, to, my mother got lost basically on the way to the hospital one day, and I came across this. So this was the first piece of graffiti I ever saw in real life. It was by a famous guy who ended up being a member of Massive Attack. I was completely mesmerised and got entirely and utterly obsessed with graffiti. But I was already kind of into it. So uh, Malka McLaren had um, done a song called Buffalo Goals, which is the first ever pop video I remember seeing, and it was all people from New York hip-hop scene. And the graffiti artist called Lee, who's really famous, was heavily part of the video. But then the big thing that completely stitched me up for the next 30 years was a documentary called Style Wars, which was shown um, on Channel 4 during the Christmas school holidays, and I recorded it on a Betamax videotape, that's how old I am, and I watched it so often I, the tape wore out. And then this book came out called Subway Art, and Subway Art was a bible for all the graffiti kids, pretty much with the most shoplifted book in history. Like Everybody I knew had a copy, no one had ever paid for it. Um, so there wasn't a receipt amongst us. And then just to top it all off, this huge um, gallery in Bristol called the Arnafini, which was really well known for kind of avant-garde and kind of contemporary art, gave his entire space over to a load of Brit um, British graffiti artists, made it free and inspired an entire generation of us. And no, I didn't go to prison. <laughs> but you can see an uh, allotment at the back. The big wall from the prison backs onto an allotment, so that's where we all painted, um, which was slightly ironic. But you could hear the prisoners heckling us because they could smell the paint. Um, and basically, it's a weird thing that the community even happened. This is all pre-web. This was, like, it wasn't easy to kind of group, we were all young, we all kind of met up. Even getting hold of the fanzines, it wasn't like W. H. Smith sold them. You know, but we all just had this really weird natural group. Yeah, so m most of the 90s. I'm pretty sure I was still painting. Pretty sure I was still involved with graffiti, but I went to university. I got really drunk and stayed drunk for about six years. Um, and there's some evidence I was still involved in the culture, but I'm not sure. But then Sir Tim saved me and came up with the World Wide Web. So amongst all the dodgy stuff that you can download on the web, you were able to get pictures of graffiti from the whole world. So basically, my, I was ignited in my passion for it again. And then, um, and then Bristol exploded with graffiti again in 1998. This was a huge festival of graffiti, took up the whole city centre. Um, it pissed down non-stop for the whole two days. Um, and it's where I met somebody who became quite famous. So this is the one and only time I met Banksy who became pretty important. So at the time it was nothing, but it became a bit of a claim to fame. So during the 2000s, he became really famous. <coughs> He'd been painting for a quite a long time before that, but with a quite traditional style, and it took him a little while to find his voice. But basically he changed the kind of way culture was seen. But he wasn't alone. We talk about him as the chosen one, but there was a whole generation of graffiti artists in Bristol. This is a place called Stokes Croft, which is where they all congregated. It briefly became famous because they had riots about people opening their Tesco's there. But Bristol kind of built a reputation as a city of graffiti. So this is Upfest. It started in 2008. It's happened every year since. It calls itself Europe's biggest street art festival. It takes an entire two-mile street and paints pretty much every wall on it. Um, they don't close the street. Um, this is when the council worked out they could make money out of Banksy. <laughs> so this was a huge event in Bristol. People brought um, bus loads of people to it. Mainly for locals, we just liked watching people queue to queue. <laughs> so it, it was fantastic. Um, and this was see no evil, so the, ca the council could now really smell the money. So they did two years of this web, um, graffiti festival where they shut down a street in Bristol, painted pretty much every wall, brought artists from all around the world, and it was great fun. Um, so I've been carrying on and carrying on. So I turned 40 in 2013, 30 years after I saw that first piece of graffiti. Um, so what a normal person did, I got a flight to New York and went to the biggest home of graffiti in New York City and went to this building that then got knocked down a month after. And then last year, I had a mild breakdown at work and basically got told to piss off. <laughs> so I, um, I ran away on, on Eurotunnel to Paris and basically walked around some pretty dubious areas of Paris for a, a few days, just taking pictures of graffiti art and getting weird looks. And then I went all the way to New Zealand for a friend's wedding. And while everyone else was kind of bungee jumping and mountain biking down you know, hills and stuff, I went to Christchurch, which got flattened by an earthquake. Um, and now it's a massive outdoor graffiti festival. So I just went there for the entire time. And here I am now in Swansea. So I've never changed. I'm still into graffiti 30 years later. I'm going to Berlin on Friday to meet graffiti artists I met on Twitter. 
Um, these days, my copy of Style Wars is on Blu-ray and not on Betamax. Thank you.